Hello. You have reached the studios of UK Motor Talk. I'm afraid that no one is available to talk right now. They are all making themselves comfortable in front of the television to absorb the full atmosphere of the first race weekend of Formula One in 2022. With any luck, they might be back by next week. Meanwhile, here are a few thoughts from some of our F1 chums. I'm just looking forward to uh, to get back in the car and, and start driving it, you know, to uh, to see how everything is handling. I had a good bit of time off and uh, yeah, recharge to uh, to go driving again. I think um, we need a couple of races to see how the wrecks pan out and how the cars will be, how they will be to drive and how they will be to race. We always had ground effect, um, a large contribution to the downforce we, we have in the cars, but obviously now it's the biggest contribution, so it will be more than previous years. Um, so yeah, looking forward to it. I think the cars should be a little bit different to drive, um, but until <laughs> we start the season, we don't know how different. Second year with Alpine and uh, yeah, I'm, I'm more optimistic than, than last year probably because the new rules uh, gives you that, uh, that hope that everything can, uh, can change and uh, you suddenly be competitive you know, from, from race one. So I'm optimistic, uh, confident. I think the team did a good job with the, with the car and uh, we're ready to go. I'm very excited about the, the new regs. Obviously, uh, from time to time, Formula One changes um, the regulations and, and try to, to mix a little bit the performance uh, from everybody. And uh, for Alpine or, or some of the midfield teams that we, we were uh, last year, there is an opportunity for sure if, if we do a good job and um, interpreting the rules and uh, maximizing every, every opportunity this year is going to be important. So um, everyone in the team feels that uh, we can do it. The nice thing with starting the season, the first race, is that you have no idea how it's going to pan out. You have no idea about where you're going to stand compared to other teams, um, who's going to be winning, what's going to be top 10, no clue. And that is exciting. And that's also, you know, really motivating to, to keep pushing, keep trying to work harder than the others to be up there. So it's exciting and I'm looking forward to see what happens. I feel like there's no no limits in a way. We shouldn't put any limits on what is our target, what we can do, what we can't do. So and anything is possible and that is exciting and that's same for every team. But we as a team take it as, a, as an opportunity to make a good jump forward, uh, to make sure that we make good progress uh, from previous years, but also then during the first year of, with the new Rex. So it's exciting because in theory it puts everyone much closer together with performance. Uh, it should mean more variable podium results, more variable winners, um, point scorers. Um, I feel like it's going to be a bit more equal than it was before. Also, thanks to the budget cap and, and the changes in, in the cars. So I really think it's going to be good for Formula One and it's going to be fun for the spectators, but fun for drivers and teams as well. Well, you know, a lot is unknown um, about the car. So personally, I feel good. I mean, um, what is important is that you, you prepare yourself in the best way possible physically. Um, but yeah, in terms of the, the, the car, you don't know. So that's why I think I'm also very curious to see how the car is behaving on track. Well, it's been a very unusual process, this one. Um, it's a huge regulation change, biggest one we've had since 1983 when the um, Venturi cars were banned and flat bottom cars introduced. So the aerodynamic changes which lead as a representation to this are designed to help overtaking. So the theory is that if you create a shape where, as the downforce is produced, that always um, kind of produces a posh at the back of the car, so you get this kind of rooster tail coming up at the back. If that then back fills or side fills from underneath, then the wake from the, follow from the car is, is goes above the car that's following it. So therefore the car behind keeps its downforce. It's not just the shape of the cars that change, but the rule, the technicality in the rules is massively complicated now. So everyone's trying to look at the wording of the rules to try and work out what we can actually get away with. The main changes on, on this year's car, um, it, 
it's moved from being a sort of normal car, as we would say, for the last 10 years, into more of a ground effect car. So the floor is going to be working a lot closer to the ground. We've got to concentrate on you know, how stable those flow structures are, and that's going to be one of the key understandings um, that we need to learn and understand. Um, we've also got a completely new power unit for this year. Viri have been working very hard um, trying to produce the best thing we can because it all gets locked away now. Uh, for There's a homologation period for the next three years, so there's been a huge effort to try and um, get that ready for this year. There's also been some um, great collaboration between um, Enstone and Viri to try and get the maximum out of the car potential as well as just um, improving engine performance. The other change for this year is swapping from 13-inch to 18-inch tyres, um, which again, we, we've been doing lots of development on those through the year, as all the teams have. But again, that's something that we, we need to learn about in the, uh, the early tests and early races. The hope is that uh, we can follow each other closer on track. Um, so maybe that provides more action, more overtaking opportunities, uh, close fights. And that's probably better for everybody, for the show, uh, for the spectators, but also for us drivers. Uh, I really like, you know, the delivery, I like the, the colors, the combination, uh, obviously the technical side of it, uh, we have to keep it secret and uh, we have to um, first hit the track and, and, and see how it behaves. Uh, I think it's going to be a, a very intense winter for us where we need to, to develop the car as fast as we can and, and learn from the new regulations. But uh, we have some interesting solutions on, on the car and uh, let's see if we can uh, unlock the performance uh, as soon as possible. Obviously 2022 is set to be an exciting year. I don't think anybody really knows exactly what's going to happen. And I think until we get to the first test or, or even the first race, I don't think we're really going to know who's fast and who's not and what good lap time is going to be. So um, yeah, I mean, I think it's going to be full of surprises maybe. And um, it's going to be um, a new car for the drivers to learn. Obviously they can do as much as they can in the sim. But until they get in the actual real thing, I don't think there's anything that compares to it. Um, so yeah, uh, who knows? Who knows? It's a guessing game. I think they want the racing to be a bit closer, so that's why they have made these changes. Now, obviously, they've done a lot of investigating what will make those desired effects, and this is what they've come up with. So yes, I think that is the goal, to be honest. Closer racing, easier overtaking. I'm fully excited or pumped up for the season of 2022 because new era, new car, new generations of the car and it's something that we all start a little bit more to a base basic or baseline and that's for me you know the first season to be there maybe I have to or can be adapting a little bit less and then you know as a team we really have to find what's the best way of you know moving forward or finding speed so that's I think you know it's down to whatever or which team that can find that the earliest then they can develop the whole car throughout the year in the right direction but uh, overall I think it's a little bit more like a, a blank blind you know year that who will be perform better than the others so super exciting for already for Barcelona test and more for the first season of season opening around in Bahrain. There'll be a lot of stuff that uh, you have to find in the testing days and also you will be learning especially in the first race weekend that's how the car will adapt because testing is only testing to be honest and uh, you won't get to see the full package of all the teams and also you won't see the fully performance of the car as well but uh, I think uh, yeah with the new regulation just by doing the sim there will be things that we have to adapting have to be changing in terms of driving style as well as the way to set up the car but uh, yeah in general i think uh, we'll find more during the season uh, it's always a really exciting uh, time of the season um, when you see everything coming together it will be a steep learning curve for for everyone uh, in the team uh, you know how to set up the car um, how to drive the car you know from my side i think it's it's going to be a know a process of, of learning um, in the first you know part of the season spent some time in the simulator um, I mean it's hard to know how you know accurate the, how accurate the simulator is until we get you know the real car out on track but uh, you know it's it's gonna be uh, yeah it's gonna be very exciting on uh, on Friday when we uh, you know leave the uh, the pits for, for our first few shakedown laps you can always learn, you're always improving, you can always learn from previous experience. But of course, with a complete new set of regulations, it's going to be all about the development, how quickly, you know, the teams get on top of this set of new regulations. Development's going to be thick and fast. And of course, with a cost cap, it's got to be efficient. We're aiming very much to build on what we achieved last year. So uh, the target is to try and 
you know, obviously retain the title. And uh, the big unknown is, have we missed something with these regulations? Has another team stolen a march because of the focus and effort that went into 2021? We believe we've got a good car. RB18 is, uh, you know, coming to life. Every single component is brand new this year. And, uh, you know, with it being a ground effect car, with it being designed to make overtaking hopefully easier, the cars easier to follow each other, that's uh, changed the whole philosophy, you know, of how we design these cars. So um, it's a steep learning curve. It's steep for everyone. And it's a race of development between first race and the last race. Just to be back to, to normal um, things, you know, to to have more interaction with the fans, be able to, yeah, feel more their support, and and um, that's something I'm definitely looking forward to. You know, we with Formula One, we've been so uh, restricted in the last couple of years, so yeah, looking forward to that. And uh, yeah, most most of the races, you know, the fans, Formula One is growing so much around the world that I, I'm looking forward to to all of them, really. So yeah, how excited I am to, to drive the A522 on track. Uh, very much looking forward to it, for sure. Um, I mean, it's always a privilege anyway to, to jump in a, in a new car. Um, you know, such a talented group of, of people I've worked on uh, in Viri and Enstone, you know, thousands of people. So it's just, uh, it's just great to, to have the chance to, to drive, uh, you know, that car that everybody has, uh, has put hours of work in uh, for the first time. And, and that's coming very soon. I mean, I f we feel prepared uh, after after the the year last year. We feel that um, you know we've we've progressed uh, during the season, and we want to keep that going. Uh, of course, with my group of, of engineers, um, with my mechanics, and and everybody, we want to you know keep progressing uh, step by step, and hopefully we can we can keep keep that going like last year. Uh, the relationship with Stephen. Uh uh, has been better and better, you know, from from race one last year, I think, until now race one this year, um, over 2021. Uh, I think we we had good fun together. We we worked together, um, and, and we understood that uh, is the best thing for for the team and for the performance of ourselves as well. And yet, yeah, during the winter, it was a long period that we didn't see each other. So we were. Uh, uh, texting sometimes and we have a WhatsApp group with Loran as well and uh, yeah we were having fun and uh, and obviously missing each other a little bit so now it's time to, to race again together and uh, help the team to, to move forward. I think it's actually first time for me being in, in the team the more experienced driver and I'm definitely ready for it. Uh, I have good experience in, in this sport and having a rookie teammate he will need support and I'm ready to, to give that because in the end if we want the results in the future, in the years to come, we need to be able to work together. And I know what it feels like to be a rookie. And you are really relying a lot on the team and, and your teammate as well. Um, and yeah, you need the right respect and, and the right mentality to, to make it work. And I'm sure we can work well together. And I'm going to help Guan Yu as much as I can on his, his um, journey. To, to become a complete driver in Formula 1 uh, and a competitive driver. So I look forward to it. He's a nice guy and he's got the will to work hard. So I'm, I'm sure we can achieve good things together. To be the only rookie in 2022 Formula 1 grid, I think, you know, there's of course a little bit of pressure, but it doesn't really get to me because I feel more pressure, you know, last season. You know, I have, there's too many people watching me, has an eye on me, my Formula 2 end of campaign. So that was a lot of pressure, but I think I deal with that pretty well and uh, all this you know these years of racing I was able to try to adapting myself or mentality wise or mental wise that to be adapting with different situations I mean uh, but uh, in general I think Formula One is a new experience a new world that I have to get used to I have to be settled in especially at the beginning but uh, I'm ready you know to be uh, or do to following all these you know rookies from last year trying to be beat them or trying to be develop my you know my energy on track yeah for the personal side I want to firstly showing my ability I think that's what's very important and uh, I'm ready to you know to be putting my feet in Formula One and trying to explore everything I have and then the secondly to be you know as a family with Alfa Romeo F1 team Holland because uh, to be a family of friends with your mechanics, engineers, the staff and also teammates is a very important part in motorsports that uh, can help you moving together and uh, yeah, you know, spending so many times 
around the world of a season also in the factory is very important that side. You know, I'm ready to not just be, be there for the first season to learn. I want to be here for a season to learn. I also want to show some very good potential as well. So exciting for the season ahead. Well, we started, I think, as one of the first teams to prepare for this season. So hopefully we start off well and then, um, you know, it will very much depend on how strong the car will be at the beginning of the year, where we are relative to others and how spread out or not the field will be. So all these answers I think we will get uh, very shortly. Normally when the rules are new, the field is a bit more spread out and the longer you stick to the same amount of rules, same rules then uh, uh, the field comes closer together. It should be that you know with these set of rules everybody starts closer to each other and then comes even more together but again we don't know. It all depends where the others are. I think uh, we've done our homework and uh, we've done what we could and now uh, we will see you know how our car looks in comparison to the others and then especially how it feels on track. Last year we had a disappointing year, so obviously we expect a big step up. Um, so, uh, you know, I, I, I'm, you don't know what to expect from all the new regulations, the new cars, etc. But uh, I think we, we're really aiming to make a big improvement and to fight for front positions. Tires will be new, um, so in, in addition to the cars, I think uh, it's a new, very, very new package. Cars will be heavier as well. So there's lots of uh, changes, individual changes, but they all come together as one big change. As a driver, of course, I drive to win races, but also we need to be realistic from where we come from as a team. Um, it's been challenging last couple of years for, for Alfa Romeo, but I'm here to help and I'm here to work hard, do my part, that we're going to make progress. And I think like, in the first year with the, with the team, if we can get you know, more consistently on the points than previous years. I think that would be already an achievement. But of course, secretly, I'm also aiming, aiming very high and I want to be up there. So I'll keep pushing and, um, you know, also try and keep guiding the team and really pushing forward together, uh, united. I think that's going to give us eventually the results and that's going to be so rewarding. So for sure, I need like a bit of a reset on on my targets, most likely I'm not going to be fighting for the race wins immediately. That's that's uh, pretty realistic to say, but eventually we will be. We have a new lineup. Uh, it's the first time that we are developing and uh, producing a car under the cost cap regulation. Um, I think that uh, for sure that the big teams will probably keep uh, uh, advantages of uh, technology and so and uh, we have to be realistic but at least for us it's a it's a new journey mm -hmm. we have a, a lot of new sponsors coming in and uh, we are starting a, a, a new four years of uh, homologation that um, and I think you can feel this motivation and this expectation into the team uh, but I would say that it's very often the same when you start a season the before the first test, it's like the before the first day at school, you know, that uh, you want to see who will be next to you. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, no, but this one for sure, that starting from scratch on every single topic, it's a, it's a mega one. That, um, and we know also that we stopped last year quite early mm -hmm. and that we were fully focused on 2022. It was, mm -hmm. we don't know, but it was perhaps not the same uh, in every single other team that, uh, let's see. The challenge is always the same, and that uh, that you have to start uh, and uh, you have to start almost from scratch. This season was completely from scratch with a completely new regulation. We had zero carryover compared to to last year, and then you have to do the the best of what you can do with your budget. And with the, the big difference is this season we have no reference because that we can't compare with the car of last year. The, 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 we have a so huge big gap in terms of regulation that it's. Uh, Nobody knows exactly where we are. We know where we are, but we don't know where the others are. And, uh, mm -hmm. and by, at the end of the day, it's uh, just all about comparison. It means that it's, we are completely blind. Not just us, uh, that everybody is completely blind. And uh, at least until uh, Barcelona, probably more Bahrain. And this is exciting. Yeah. Through the first two tests and the earlier races, there's going to be a, a massive step in learning. We've obviously had our own ideas of what this set of rules means. We're going to see nine other options of what that is. We'll try and pick the best pieces out of everything. So, you know, we're learning all the time in our own wind tunnel. We get the luxury of looking at the results of nine other wind tunnels. 
so we can actually understand and just make a better car. So it's, there's going to be a huge increase in performance. And, and as well, the cars you'll see at the first test, we've already got a load of upgrades coming through for the second test in the first race. So again, this development battle is underway, but it will really step up once we start analysing closely what all the other car solutions are. I mean, we have ourselves have had, you know, you, you do some developments, you reach a fork in the road and you go down one fork, other people would reach that point and would have gone the other way. So it'll be really interesting to see how the, the solutions that we've tried and passed over to see how people have developed that type of concept. There'll be things we, that we've got right, there'll be things we've got wrong and need to improve. But that, that, that's the fun of it, really. And that's what makes the, you know, the, the early tests and these early races so exciting. You know, we tested the tyres at the end of last season um, after uh, the race in Abu Dhabi. Um, but, you know, that was with last year's car and, and stuff. So uh, it's definitely going to be be new for everybody. Um, it's going to look different. Um, it's going to feel different. But I think, you know, the whole set of regulations being new for everyone is, is very exciting and uh, hopefully it makes racing better and uh, you know hopefully the car, cars are fun to drive. It's been great to see us grow as a team especially back at the factory um, you know a lot of talented people have come on board now um, you know and, and I think the future is very exciting the f new factory is coming up uh, is, be, is coming up very quickly it's being built very quickly uh, next door and uh, you know that's very exciting as well so uh we've definitely come a long way since um i first started yeah i mean to be the first ever formula one driver from china is a huge that huge relief to be honest that's a dream that uh, i was chasing since of little kid since i first very got into a go-kart and uh, yeah i knew how difficult it is to be honest uh the journey all the way to formula one has been incredible tough there's quite too many things that, uh, you know, I have to sacrifice also our family have to sacrifice in order that you still don't know if the dream will be became true one day or not. But uh, I'm really, you know, proud that it's happened and uh, hopefully, you know, can bring more people that can be interested in watching races, interested in motorsports back home in China. For a racing driver, we all know how tough it is to, you know, make my way forward. Also for following the, exactly the racing ladders from Formula 4, karting Formula 4, all the way to F3, F2 and now Formula 1. And uh, yeah, it's been extremely tough because motorsports starts very behind compared to the European countries. And then, you know, we have not a lot of professional, you know, people like our teams that can be helping us develop as a driving skills, as well as that, uh, you know, we really have to be sacrificed the way of we want to live our life to moving outside, everything became new. And I think the most important is that there's no leader ahead of me. So I don't have anyone that can guide me around, can show me the right di direction, right decisions make. So there, there was years that I made the wrong decisions. There's a tough times that I have to really get over it. But uh, yeah, in general, to be that first one is definitely something very important. With the experience I've gathered during the years, um, four years with Williams and then five years with Mercedes, winning the constructors five times in a row, um, I think that experience will, will help me a lot because now I know exactly what a winning team needs in terms of how it operates, how it works how you need to work as a, as a team. So all the experiences I've, I've gathered in my years, I'm going to put into a good use and um, try and try and help to go, go to the top with this team together. I think it's important to make sure that the people you work with, they know, know about the past and, and the history and, and the great moments the team has had before. So there's so much heritage with this, um, with this team. Uh, with the brand as well that um, maybe after you know a couple of tough years people need a bit of a push a bit of a motivation that we can do it so it's, i need to make sure that no one loses hope and if you've done it before if you've been at the top before you can be there again so uh, yeah we need to work together on that to make sure that we we know what is possible and achievable well, it grew throughout last year and, and you saw the culmination of that in the teamwork in the latter races, particularly in Abu Dhabi. And, you know, Checo in his first year winning that race in Azerbaijan, you know, other podiums. He's going to be, you know, stronger and taking a step up, I'm sure, in 2022. And for Max, I mean, he was just phenomenal last year and uh, an outstanding season for him. You know, he dominated 
the amount of laps led, you know, at 10 Grand Prix victories uh, and, of course, the World Championship. So his confidence is going to be sky high and looking to build on those performances in 2022. UK Motor Talk would like to thank all of our Formula One friends and wish each of them good luck for 2022. If you didn't recognize the voices, though if you've listened this far, I imagine you probably did. They were Max Verstappen, Sebastian Vettel, Fernando Alonso, Valtteri Bottas, Adrian Newey, Pat Fry, Jess Hawkins, Joe Guanyu, Lance Stroll, Christian Horner, Checo Perez, Esteban Ocon, and Fred Vasser. UK Motor Talk, a first take media production.